Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this truss using flexibility matrix method. This is a statically indeterminate truss. We need to find the degree of static indeterminacy that is DSI plus DSC. To find DSI that is internal static indeterminacy, this is the formula. Here M is the number of the members. Let us count the members 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So M is 9. J is the number of the joints. Let us count the joints. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. J is 6. For DSI, we will get a 0. Let us find the degree of external static indeterminacy. R is the total number of the reactions to be found. At A and D, we have hinged supports. In the hinged supports, there will be two reactions. So 2 plus 2, that will be 4. Small r is the number of available equilibrium conditions. There are three conditions available. Sigma V is equal to 0. Sigma M is equal to 0. And Sigma H is equal to 0. So small r is 3. For DSE, we will get to 1. So the degree of static indeterminacy will be 1. We have only external degree of static indeterminacy. So out of these 4 reactions, we need to release one reaction. I am going to release the horizontal reaction from D, that is HD. I have released the horizontal reaction HD. Previously at D, we had a hinged support. Now there is a roller support. We know that in the roller support there will be only one reaction. Here there is only vertical reaction. This structure is called the released structure. Let us draw the coordinates diagram. In this analysis there is only one coordinate because we have removed only HD. Let us assume that HD is acting towards the right side. If we get negative value, then we can change the direction. This is the formula we are going to use to find HD. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate. So inside all of these four matrices, there will be only one member. Delta is the deflection due to temperature change or due to reduction or extension of the members. In this analysis, nothing is mentioned about these. So we can assume that there is no external deflection. In this case, the delta will be 0. So we will get this formula. We know that in all of these three matrices, there is only one member. In this case, we can take the members out of the matrices. P1 is HD. Delta inverse will be 1 upon delta. So we have simplified the formula to find HD. We have to make a table. In the table, first we need to enter all of the members. P is the member forces in the released structure. Let us find all of the member forces in the released structure. Before finding the member forces, we have to find the reactions. At A, we need to find two reactions. And at D, we need to find one reaction. To find VA, I am going to take moment about D. In this case, we have to follow right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. VA is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. And the distance is 5 plus 5 plus 5, so it will be 15. 15 VA. This load is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative and the distance is 10. This load is also acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is also negative and the distance is 5. This horizontal load is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 4. For VA, we will get 12 kN. Let us apply this rule and find VD. VA and VD are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards, so both of them are negative. For VD, we will get 16 kN. Using this rule, we can find HA. 
HA is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. This load is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. For HA, we will get 10 kN. Now we need to find the member forces. Before that, we need to find the angles. Let us take this triangle. In this triangle, let us find the angle theta. Tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side. The opposite side is 4 meter and the adjacent side is 5 meter. So it will be 4 upon 5. So theta will be 38.66. If this angle is 38.66, this angle and this angle also should be 38.66. First, I am going to take joint D and to find the member forces. I am going to use method of joints to find the member forces. Similar kind of statically determinate structure I have already analyzed. This is in the description. You can see that for getting more idea in method of joints. Also, I am going to use only cos theta. If you wanted to use a sin theta as well, you can do that. 90 minus 38.66, we will get this angle 51.34. In the joint D, first we have to use this rule because there will be only one unknown. This is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FDE is inclined. We have to resolve it in the vertical direction. To make it vertical, we need 51.34 degree. So with the FDE, we have to multiply cos 51.34. It is acting upwards, so it will be positive. For FDE, we will get minus 25.61. Let us apply this rule and find FCD. FCD is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. FDE is inclined. We have to resolve that in the horizontal direction. To make it horizontal, we need 38.66 degree. So with the FDE, we have to multiply cos 38.66. It will be acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. Just before we have found FDE, we can apply that. Negative into negative, it will become positive. For FCD, we will get 20 kN. Now we are going to take the joint E and to find the member forces. If this angle is 38.66, this angle also should be 38.66. And this angle will be 90 minus 38.66. It will be 51.34. First, we have to use this rule because there will be only one unknown. This is acting downwards, so it will be negative. FDE is inclined, we have to make it a vertical. To make it a vertical, we need this angle. So with FDE, we have to multiply cos 51.34. Since it is acting downwards, it will be negative. We can apply the value of FDE. Already here, there is negative and this is also negative. So negative into negative, it will become positive. FCE is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For FCE, we will get a 4. Then we have to apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. We have to make FDE horizontal. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So we have to multiply cos 38.66 with the FDE. It will be acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FDE is a negative 25.61. We can apply that. For FEF, we will get minus 20. Now let us take the joint C. If this angle is 38.66, this angle will be 90 minus 38.66. It will be 51.34. First, we have to apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. FCF is inclined. We have to resolve it in the vertical direction. To keep it vertical, we need this angle. So with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 51.34. Since it is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FCE is acting upwards, so it will be positive. Just before we have calculated FCE, we can apply that. For FCF, we will get this. Now let us apply this rule. FCD is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FBC is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. FCF is inclined, we have to resolve that in the horizontal direction. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 38.66. Since it is acting towards the left side, it will be negative. 
we can apply the value of FCF. Here already there is negative. So negative into negative, it will become positive. And let us apply the value of FCD. For FBC, we will get 25 kN. Now let us take the joint B. In the vertical direction, we have only one member FBF. So that will be 0. Let us apply this rule. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. And this is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. For FAB, we will get 25. Now we are going to take the joint A. FAB, we have already found, we have to only find FAF. Using this rule, we can find that. This is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FAF is inclined, we have to resolve that in the vertical direction. To keep it vertical, we need 51.34 degree. So we have to multiply FAF with the cos 51.34. Since it is acting upwards, it will be positive. For FAF, we will get minus 19.21. Let us enter all of the member forces. Now we have to find the values of K. We have to remove all of the loads from the truss. And in the direction of HD, we have to apply unit load and then we need to find all of the member forces. I have applied unit load in the direction of HD. We need to find these three reactions. By applying this rule for HA, we will get 1. To find VA, we can take a moment about D. VA is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. And the distance is 15, so 15 VA. For this horizontal reaction, there is no perpendicular distance about D. So we should not consider that. In this case, there is nothing. So VA will be 0. Using this rule, we can find VD. Otherwise, we can take directly VD as 0. Because there is no vertical load or vertical reaction. In this case, VD will become 0. Let us take the joint D and to find the member forces. Let us use this rule. We will come to know that FDE will be 0. Otherwise, you can apply shortcut. These shortcuts, as I told you already, I have made a separate video. You can click the link and watch that video. Let us apply this rule. This force is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FCD is acting towards the left side, it should be negative. For FCD, we will get 1. If FCD is 1, FAB also should be 1. If this is 0, this also will be 0. We can take the joint B and apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. There is only one vertical member that is FBE. So that will be 0. Then we can take the joint E. We can apply the rule sigma H is equal to 0. This is already 0. So FFE will be 0. And when we apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0, FCE is also 0. Then we can take the joint C. We can apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. This is 0. So this also should be 0 because there is no other vertical force. Now let us take the joint C and to find the member force FCB. We can apply this rule. FCD is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FBC is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. We already know FCD 1, we can apply that. In this way for FBC, we will get 1. Let us enter all of the values of K. Then we need to find the length of the members. Length of A, B, B, C, C, D and F, E is 5. Length of B, F and C, E is 4. To find length of A, F, F, C and E, D, we can apply Pythagoras rule. Root of 5 square plus 4 square, we will get 6.403 meter. Then we can find PKL and K square L. We need to add all of these and we need to add these. So that we will get 350 and 15. Using this formula, we can find delta L. And using this formula, we can find delta. In the question, nothing is mentioned about the area or Young's modulus. So that we can assume that area and Young's modulus for all of the members are constant. 
In this formula, we can apply both of these. For HD, we will get a negative value. That means the assumed direction is incorrect. We assumed that HD would be acting towards the right side, but actually it is acting towards the left side. In the table, we can add one more column or we can make a separate table. Using this formula, we can find all of the member forces. For this particular problem, no need to find the vertical reactions. The vertical reactions are same as the vertical reactions which we have calculated for the released structure. By applying this rule, we can find HA. For HA, we will get a negative value. That means the assumed direction is incorrect. Actually, HA is acting towards the right side. Here, I have changed the direction of HA. Here, I have entered all of the member forces in the truss. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.